hey, can I see my future in this thing? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, 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 we're gonna take a look at the Bandai SH Figuarts Spider-Man Far From Home upgraded suit. Now, I think this is coming in a little bit late for some reason. My shipment got delayed. I don't know what happened. <laughs> in fact, I kind of forgot about it, and then it just showed up, and then, oh, wait, wait, where'd this come from? And after preferring the Mayfix Homecoming Spider-Man over the original SH Figuarts Homecoming Spider-Man, I thought I would wait for a Mayfax Far From Home Spider-Man, but <laughs> Metacom being what it is, it'll probably be announced next year sometime, and this looked good, so I, 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 I couldn't help it. Looking at the package, it's kind of your standard SH Figure Arts packaging, but Bandai's getting a little bit cocky. There's a lot of package art on here covering up the actual figure, you know, the product you're buying. On the side, a pretty shot of the figure itself, some kind of awesome logo. I don't know if I've seen this before. I would like a shirt of that. On the back, more pretty promotional shots showing off the figure, a bunch of unreadables. On the other side, more promotional shots. On the top, logo, another Spider-Man symbol type thing. On the bottom, UPC, probably legalities, maybe a warning or two you're winning lottery numbers. I'm gonna see what's going on here. They could have dropped this down. It would have still been dynamic. Spider-Man's head sticking out of here, shrunk the logo a little bit, bring it down. I also forgot to mention the holographic sticker prism thing to prove that it's an official Tamashii Nation's product. So if something goes wrong with this figure, I don't wanna hear any, did you get the bootleg? And look at getting the tray out of the package. You don't see all this stuff. Oh, and Tamashii Nation's hasn't just been sitting around and throwing new design elements on top of the same old body. They've been improving some stuff. It may make this my favorite Spider-Man so far. Not because it's all new and shiny and stuff. That's not it. They've done some engineering to fix a couple of the nitpicks I had with the Homecoming Spider-Man. But for some reason, they're still making the eyes silver. I, I don't looking at the overall body it's very tom holland sized i mean it, it's not quite teenager it's not quite adult it's muscular but it's small you know what i mean it's lithe it's compact i guess you could say the musculature and proportions make it look like an actual person inside the costume we have the sculpted web lines and they put pain in them when we get to the comparisons you'll see why i'm pointing that out the nice little spider emblem on the front what i really like though is the white on the back it's a nice contrast it sticks out I've slowly become a fan of the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man, and this feels like just a little flavor from that. But the darker part, the black, and well, I hate to say black, I think there's almost a blue tint to it. It's mostly black, but in certain lights, it kind of looks bluish. But there's also some texture thrown in there, too. It's very subtle. You can see the lines running through it, but then it stops and goes into a flat spot. Same thing down here to the legs. It's jarring a little bit. Your brain doesn't see it at first, but it knows something's going on. You're looking for what kind catches your eye and then whoop, it's right there. Looking at the SH Figure Arts Homecoming Spider-Man, you can definitely see that they've improved upon this body. You have limitations with hard plastic, with things that aren't skin, muscle, and bone. On the Homecoming, they had to make the neck long, I had some gap right here in order for him to, oh well, not do that. That was in order to get him to look up. Also, there's some gap around the hips. I don't remember if it came like this because this belt part is a separate piece. And I've had it in a crunch position since I got this figure. So I don't know if this is just warped out a little bit. And then just the overall proportions feel spindly. On the Far From Home updated suit, they've made it feel a little bit more human, a little bit more filled out. The belt section right here, or well, above the hips, it's no longer a separate piece. It's the abs going down into the crotch, so there's no chance of it moving around, flopping, whatever. They still kind of have the butt flap thing going on whenever you bend the leg. This comes down and fills in any space that may be opened up by moving the leg. So you can get into crazy poses and it still looks complete. It still looks full. But the biggest thing for me is the head and the neck. They filled out the head a little bit. They shortened the neck. And what they did here was add this piece underneath the head itself. And what that does is as you put it into extreme pose, Poses, you come up, it slides the head up and down on that center column piece. So you can get back, it moves up out of the way, and as you come back, it slides back down onto that piece. Now, once you get to a certain point, it does get kind of loosey-goosey. You get into a pose, it's not going to stay on, <laughs> of course, but it works really, really well. In order to implement this, they had to put a hinge at the top of the head, but they put sculpt parts on it. You don't see that very often. It kind of hides it whenever you're bending it. That's kind of brilliant. I, I like that. And then doing it this way too makes it easier to swap the eyes. The first one had swappable eyes, but you had to kind of 
pick at it to get it out. Now you look up in there, you have a tool that you can take and push that out. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it helps them stay in really well because it kind of pops down through that hole. And honestly, the whole thing just feels very Spider-Man-ish. I get some poses and I think, man, with the black and the design itself, it's a callback to the classic almost first appearance type costume that Spider-Man wore. It's a nice red, it's a nice black, blue black, whatever you want to call it. And even though I haven't been able to look at steals from the movie with a fine tooth comb, I've only seen it the one time in the theater, they've added these little white parts and pieces. Where'd that other one go? Oh, there it is on the inside wrist. I'm guessing that's where the web shoots out maybe, but I'm not quite sure what that is. But it's a nice design element that again, it sticks in your brain without just being overbearing. The red is kicked in through here very, very nicely. Same thing with the forearms. It just ties all together because of that. And then even the soles of the feet, you have this neat little design. Going over articulation, taking the head off, there is a ball joint at the top of that hinge on the neck. And then there's another ball joint down at the bottom of the neck. So altogether, as you manipulate it back, he can look completely up. Can bury the chin. Not as much tilt as you would think. With a ball joint at the bottom of that, it should have been able to move a little bit more, but it's all at the bottom of the neck. Then of course swivel. There's a butterfly joint that's attached at the front of the shoulder here, so it kicks forward, but it also goes up and down. But the cutout for that butterfly, you can't make it work all the way up in there. It's close, but not as far as I would like. And then inside that assembly piece is a ball joint coming out to a hinge and swivel in the shoulder. So that comes up, swivels around, and then rotates on that ball, but it doesn't go as far as a bicep swivel would have. I can understand them not wanting to break up this detail, but also I'd like a little bit more arm twist. Double joint in the elbow comes up to about right there. Figure arts joint in the wrist. It's a swivel hinge swivel, so you, can, so you can get it going in and out, but if you turn it and manipulate it, you can go up and down. Ball joint in the mid torso, ball joint at the waist, so it does crunch <laughs> pretty much all the way. Arc back, about right there. Tilt tilt, and then it swivels at the mid torso, but not at the waist. And then we have all kinds of magic going on here in the crotch. There's this butt flat piece that comes up and around all the way to here. As you raise the leg, it comes down and covers up the gap. But then the leg also hinges out within that flap. You can see the hinge right there. Now it's interesting because here you expect Spider-Man to be able to do more than this. And what I've been doing there is you come out on that hinge, and then if you rotate this here, you can get the leg up and over. You still have run into problems of plastic against plastic, but you can get him down to a three-point stance, which looks pretty good, or even a four-point stance that is a little bit spread, but still, he can do it. Then there is a thigh swivel kind of hidden within the musculature. It, it's noticeable, but it could have been worse. Could have been just a straight line. Double knee... What? Spider-Man can't kick his own ass? But I always love the figure arts knees because of how they're integrated into both the upper and lower legs. As you bend it, the leg doesn't break. It just it keeps the shape. At the ankle, same joint as up at the wrist. You get rotation there. It hinges back. It hinges forward. There's a forward-facing pin for some rocker. And then there's a toe joint that comes up to about right there. For accessories, Spider-Man comes with two fists. He comes with two relaxed hands. He comes with two thumbs up that have holes in them for web gripping hands. He has two thwip hands. And then he has two splayed out hands for wall crawling or whatever you want to use them for. And this is just a joy to switch out. It's just a pop. And the other hand just goes right on. It's secure. It stays on. Uh, yeah. He comes with this piece which is a replacement part for this. I don't have a stage three or whatever it is stand from Bandai, so I'll never use this. And in fact, I kind of hate that the plug for this breaks up the spider on the back a little bit. He comes with several sets of webs. There's a long one for web swinging, and then there's two different sets of web shooting webs. For the long web, it just goes into the grip hand. You push it down through. He holds it really well. And even if you want to hang it from that web, He's not gonna let go. But the web shooting webs, it seems like these cups right here are too thick or something because you put it over the ball and then you try to plug the thwip hand on and it's not a very secure connection. I may try to shave that down or something because as is, it just doesn't want to work. You go to move it and the hand just kind of, oh well, now it's on. Spider Diva, Spider Diva, doing whatever a diva can. But even though it's holding, it's still not as secure as without, which makes sense. I mean, it's keeping it off a little bit, but you know what I mean. And then finally, there is the eyes. There's the wide open eyes. Then there's a set that are slightly more closed. And then there's a set that's mostly closed. And then as always, you can mix and match and open with a closed or whatever. To switch those out, you can pull the head off. 
and you see the little plug sticking through. That's why they gave you this tool. But it says to push from the side and it's a little bit flimsy. So you have to catch it on the thick and try to push right. It's barely sticking through there. Push and the eye pops out a little bit. And then from there you have to pull it out and hope you don't drop it because it's so tiny. And then I always love that they provide a separate little blister with a cover on it. That way you can keep the eyes all together, all in the same piece. And this is easier to keep track of than the individual eyes themselves. Even the instructions say, do not misplace. Oh, interesting. Hmm. The leg comes off the peg if you pull too hard. I wonder if it's supposed to do that. Does it slide out a little bit so you can get other poses maybe? But it also pops the butt flap off if you do that. Surely that's not on purpose instead of a drop down hip. I only noticed it because I was trying to stand him straight up and there was a very, very slight gap right there. Spider-Man stands at about five and five eighths. Here he is with the SH Figure Arts Homecoming Spider-Man. It's night and day. It's a definite improvement. And then he looks good next to the SH Figure Arts Iron Man. Papa? Here he is next to the Mafex Homecoming Spider-Man and the Mafex Comic Book Spider-Man. And then let's put the Figure Arts Homecoming Spider-Man back in. Like I said, I prefer the Mafex Homecoming Spider-Man over the SH Figure Arts, but man. Look how good a job they did right here. It's just way more proportionate. And looking at the whole thing, just overall, the pieces and the parts are way better integrated than either of these. It looks like a full complete piece instead of parts and pieces shoved together. Can you tell I like it? And then here he is with the Marvel Legends Homecoming Spider-Man updated suit and the Marvel Legends Mysterio. Yes, the Marvel Legends is bigger, but it surprised me how close they are in size. But throwing some paint into the web lines, unlike what Marvel Legends did, oh man, icing on the cake. That just puts it over the top. And you know what? In a display or some ACBA or whatever you want to do with your toys, I think these two work well together. So at the end of the day, <laughs> I swear, I swear it is not because it's my newest Spider-Man. But I absolutely love this thing. I, I'm back on the SH Figure Arts train when it comes to Spidey. It's not the most range I've ever seen in a Spider-Man figure. I wish the knees would bend a little bit further. I wish the elbows would bend a little bit further. I wish there was a bicep swivel. But I feel like some concessions had to be made at some places to make it look good in a neutral position too. So it busts out a lot of Spider-Man poses, but it also also looks great just standing on the shelf talking to other okay does anybody else do that where they're looking at their shelves and they think how the figures themselves are interacting with each other I know it's not just me y'all do it too so I feel like at least when it comes to MCU Spideys I have a jack-of-all-trades Peter Parker here. He can be business, but he also takes care of business. I don't know if I mentioned it because it's been a while since the first of this video, but I was kind of hesitant to get this. Like I said, I preferred the Mafex Homecoming over the SH Figure Arts, so in my brain I figured this would be the same thing. But at this point, and I, I, <laughs> and I can say this now until they actually put the pre-orders up, I think I can say that if Metacom comes out with a Far From Home updated suit, I can skip on it until they show the pictures and the solicitation and the pre-order comes up and I'm just like, I need another one. But for the time being, I am completely happy. I now want to see an SH Figure Arts Mysterio to go along with this. I need a companion piece. Other than that, all I can say is order it, get it. You'll be happy with it. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the whoosh.